you girls. I know it's been a while, but it's summer, busy with the kids, getting ready for back to school. But baby, I am here with a word for you. Girl, he don't love you. No, he don't. He don't love you. Welcome back to Church Girls Wanna Get Married. My name is Janice. Please be sure to subscribe if you have not. Please share this out. And I hope that you know that girl, he don't love you. Yes, honey. Sometimes, ladies, we have to realize that the man we've been wasting our time with, dating and we're on and off and we're breaking up and we're making up and he's cheating and he's doing everything. We have to come to the place that we realize that girl, he don't love you. Mm -hmm. I watched this show called Married at First Sight and one of the girls, Amber, Oh, she's just so desperate for love. She said, I will do anything to make this marriage work. Yes, they meet at the altar and get married. And her husband, Matt, has given her all the clues to let her know that, girl, I don't love you. He stayed out one night, 24 hours, didn't call, didn't communicate. Then he stayed out two more nights on another night. Girl, he don't love you. And she's crying and she's like, oh, I just wanted to hold me. I just wanted to come home. And then he came home and she gave him a curfew. You need to be home by 2.30. You need to text me at the beginning of the night and the end of the night. Baby girl, if you have to do all of that, guess what? He don't love you. If you have to beg him for his love and his affection and his attention and for him to be faithful, baby girl, he don't love you. What is love? My daddy always told me, Janice, love is what love does. Love is an action word. And what does the Bible say? A husband is to love his wife like Christ loved the church. And then my daddy was saying, how did Christ love the church? He died for her. See, ladies, a man a husband, a man that's going to be your husband and a husband to be, you are dating for marriage, must be willing to die to himself. Now, I'm not talking about a physical death, but I'm talking about a death dying to his wants and his needs and his desire to be with other women. This is why when the husband and wife is at the altar, the pastor said, forsake all else for your wife. You must forsake all else. And many of you ladies are dating and you're begging for his attention and you're begging for his love. And you just think if you could wash just a little bit more and sex them just a little bit more, then just maybe he's going to love you. But baby, he don't love you. No, he don't. Because if he loved you, he would show you in his actions how he treats you, how he wants to profess his love to you and provide for you and protect you. You know, one of the other husbands, he said something great. He says, I will protect my heart, your heart, like I protect mine. He told his wife, Fiona, he said, I will protect your heart the way I protect mine. And what did the apostle Paul says? Love her like you love your own body. You, a husband would have hurt himself and harmed himself. So why would he hurt it? harm his wife or wife to be. I'm not talking to married women now. Married ladies, I can't help you. Go see a counselor. I'm talking to sisters that are dating for marriage or even engaged. You know he don't love you. Women need to be loved. Men need to be respected. And we can know he loves us based on his actions. If he's cheating, he don't love you. Stop believing that. Stop believing that, oh, he loves you even though he cheats. Yes, sex is different from men and women, but he stood at the altar and took vows to be faithful to you. So if he's, I am amazed at the number of women who are boyfriends or girlfriends, you know, I don't do boyfriends or girlfriends, in a relationship, engage, engage or are married and say, oh, he was cheating before, and you still went ahead and married him? You thought standing at the altar and marrying him was going to make him stop cheating? Uh-uh, he didn't love you before. He loves himself, but he don't love you. So sisters, dating for marriage. What is dating? Dating is the art of skillfully 
gathering the data, gathering the information, investigating so that you can make an informed decision. Dating is also the process of elimination. That's why you don't meet somebody and jump in an all out relationship and then find out that he's married, got six baby mamas and 25 kids don't have a job living with his mama. You should have known that information before you jumped in head first. See, many women, we meet a guy, he's nice, and we jump in head first. I'm amazed at the number of women who have been dating him for two weeks and we're having all these problems. Why are you in a relationship? That's the stage where you should be gathering the data, getting the information so that you can make an informed decision. You don't have the data, the information to make an informed decision. Don't get involved. Do not jump in head first. My daddy always say, don't fall in love. I'm amazed at the number of us. Oh, I met him and I just fell in love. Based on what? What data? What information do you have to follow? Somebody posted, oh, it's been two weeks and I'm so in love and he wants us to get married. What information do you have, ma'am? I asked, what's his pastor's name? Have you met his bishop? You met his mama, his daddy. Where he work at? How much does he make? Have you seen his credit report? Have you seen his taxes, his W-2s? How many kids he got? Is he married? Does he have any STDs? Does he have any health problems? Do you have any documentation to prove that you know this man? See, a lot of us women, we get into these emotional relationships. We jump in emotionally. And then later we find out all this crazy stuff where if we had to sat back for one minute and learn, oh, Jesus said, learn of me. Learn of me. And see, ladies, a lot of us are not learning of these men. We jump in head first and marry them. And then cry. He ain't got no job. He can't keep a job. He got five kids. He didn't tell me about three of them. He's still married. You're married to him. Take a minute. Lean all the way back. Gather the data, the information you need to make an informed decision. I told you guys, my now husband told me after three months of dating, he loved me. Guess what I said? Thank you. Why? I wasn't finished getting the data on him. I wasn't finished. I was still learning of him. And I'm not going to jump in head first without having the data. Pastor Cal said something on matter first. I said something interesting. He said, love is a decision. That's why I don't understand people like, oh, I just fell in love. You just fell in love based on what? Love is an intellectual decision we make. He's good for me, and he knows that I'm good for him. So we're going to grow in love. We're going to become a family. We're going to get married. And all of y'all girls out here shacking up, having five and six babies for these men, talking about four kids, eight years, and he still ain't married me. He ain't going to marry you. Now, ten times, she's not. Because you think, like Leah, daughter of Jacob, that popping out babies will cause him to love you. He's not going to love you. That's why he can stay with you, shack up with you for 12 years, meet a girl three months, and marry her. Why? He loves her. He knows she's the woman he wants. She's the woman he wants to profess his love to, profess, go in front of everybody in the world, go down to City Hall and the government and the IRS and the United States government and say, I take this woman to be my lawful wedded wife. And so he's shacking up with you for years and years making babies and you thinking he loves He don't love you. Because if he loved you, he, he would cover you. He would have covered you. How he cover you? Marry you. How many of you, my sisters, have shacked up with a man or had five or six kids for him and then he don't got up and marry some other girl? How many of you? And you're still mad and you're still bitter and you're calling him a no good pig. No. 
you should have known what you wanted, not have babies for all these men, keep on popping up babies thinking that that's going to love him. Read the Bible. Everything in the Bible. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Leah kept popping out babies. Jacob was to marry Rachel. Nobody wanted to marry Leah. So Laban, J Leah's da daddy, tricked Jacob into marrying Leah. Jacob didn't love Leah. Jacob loved Rachel. And so what God did, which I, it just bugs me, he shut up Rachel's womb because Jacob loved Leah, but he opened up, loved Rachel, but he opened up Leah's womb and Leah kept popping out babies. And every baby she had, she said, maybe now my husband will love me. And after baby number four, Judah, who the Lord Jesus Christ came through. I got a problem with that because he didn't love Leah, but she was the first wife. The Lord Jesus Christ came through Judah, the bloodline of Judah. And Leah say, the Bible says she threw up her hand. She said, no, I'm going to praise God. Because for that one second, the light bulb came on for her. Jacob didn't love her. So how many of you, my sisters, can honestly say today, he don't love me and walk away? You are wasting your time. Five, six years waiting for him to marry you. He ain't going to marry you while there is somebody else. God has a Boaz out here that wants to marry you, but Boaz can't find you because you are shacked up, laid up, tied up, tangled up with some other man who want to use your body. Girl, he don't love you. It's time to move on. Leave that man alone. And I know it's hard. Come up with a plan. But if you want to be married, of course, my content is only for women who want to be married. You don't want to be married. This is not for you. My content is for my church girls who really want to be married. Church is full of all these kids that their mamas and the daddies ain't married. Ladies, it's time for us to close our ladies. I had my daughter when I was 16. I had another baby until I was 37 and married. Both of my kids, Alexia and little Michael, are 20 years apart. Why? I'm made up in my mind. Nope, I am not bringing another child in this world outside of the bonds of marriage and protection. And all children are blessed, no matter how they came here. Now, I'm talking about we agreed to have, you know, do the do. I got pregnant. That's what I'm talking about. All kids, baby, spiders, says, children are blessed and humble. All right? And your children deserve for that. They deserve it. They deserve it. Two, uh, two parents, house a mother and father, both mother and father, has something to input in that child. Yes, as single parents, we do the best we can. I did the best I could with my daughter. I was 19. She was 19 when I got married. My daughter was going to be 19. I got married and she turned 19 in August. We do the best we can. I want you to hear me now. We do the best we can, but God's perfect will is for our children to grow up in a healthy, healthy two-parent, husband and wife, daddy and mommy household so they can get the best of both worlds. And yes, a single-parent home is better than an unhealthy and toxic two-parent home. So I want you to hear me what I'm saying. God's perfect will is for our kids to grow up where they can see mommy and daddy and they're loving each other and we're teaching them how to be parents and we're teaching them how to be mates. Mate, I love you. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share this out. I absolutely love and adore you and I will see you later. Love you, girl. Remember, he don't love you, girl. He don't love you. Mm -mm. No, he don't. He don't. See you later.